Aloha and like Flynn viewers, welcome back. As many of you know, I am a former uh, Walt Disney World cast member. I worked at the old Disney MGM Studios. That's how I care to remember it. Um, now it's obviously Hollywood Studios, but back when I worked there, it was Disney MGM Studios. And man, do I have some uh, great memories from the Disney MGM Studios. But today, um, I am here to tell you about a little behind the scenes knowledge that not many people know, and I always thought this was extremely amusing. Um, so I worked on the Disney MGM Studios Backlot Tour. Now, if you remember that attraction, which is now unfortunately extinct, it breaks my heart every time I go and uh, just see it gone. It's, it's disappointing, but um, yeah, that's where I used to work. And as you know, uh, there was a pretty long back lot uh, tram part of that. That's where I worked. We called it trams. Uh, there was a separate team that worked up in the tank show. That's what we called the uh, the Pearl Harbor show, which you would, when you first came in, you would go to that, uh, you know, with the planes and everything coming in and spraying the water with the bullets and the explosions and the, the dumping of the water. Uh, that's what we called the tank show. That was a actually separate team then you had your tram uh, team, and that's what I worked on. We were the ones that operated the trams around the back lot. Uh, we did Catastrophe Canyon. We did um, all the cleanup uh, around the American Film Institute, if you remember, when you got off of the attraction. So we were in charge of all that. And um, obviously, as part of the tram team, you had to memorize a script. Because if you recall, we would sit on the back, not, not the back of the tram, but like right behind where the driver was, and we would be seeing everyone that we were on the tour with. We were actually sitting with our guests, which was really cool. I really liked that interaction with the guests and being able to sit there and see their reactions as we were doing the tour. But uh, that was basically a 20-minute script that you had to memorize verbatim. I mean, word for word. So that takes a lot of memorization. Not everyone can memorize that sort of script. And so there was an attraction that no one wanted to work where if you couldn't um, get your script down, if you couldn't memorize your script, if you got out of line at all, if you were having disciplinary issues, if you were having issues with any of your teammates um, or, for, or other cast members, um, there was a place that you would get sent basically as a disciplinary action or a reaction for not being able to memorize your script. And among cast members at the Disney MGM Studios, everyone knew that it was really a thing. I'm sure um, on the record now that they would never admit that it was a thing, um, but it was definitely a thing. And I'm sure each of the other parks had their attractions as well. Everyone always kind of knew the attractions that you did and did not want to work. Uh, the most sought after uh, positions at Disney MGM Studios at the time um, was obviously the great movie ride. Everyone wanted to be a gangster or a cowboy. That was a, a tremendous attraction. If you got to work there, you were so cool and so lucky because just everyone who aspired to be an actor really got to play in that role. And you also had a script to memorize there. So that was another attraction where if you actually got placed in Great Movie Ride and you just couldn't hack it, you would get sent to this other attraction. And it was basically a punishment and it was miserable. So what attraction am I talking about? Is it still there? Well, nope. The attraction, unfortunately, um, is extinct along with so many other attractions at Disney MGM Studios. And the attraction that I am referring to, and stay with me here if you remember this attraction, hopefully you do, hopefully you're, you're old enough and your kids are old enough to have enjoyed this, is the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids Playground. Yeah, that closed back in 2016. Um, kids everywhere enjoyed that playground, my kids included. I enjoyed getting to watch them run around and, and interact with like a lot of the really cool, just oversized sets and everything but no one wanted to work there. It was a nightmare to work there. Um, I actually had to fill in a shift one time um, over at the playground. It wasn't any kind of disciplinary action or anything like that, um, but they were extremely short-handed, and um, they came to me and asked if I'd be willing to fill in just a shift over there, which that it was a lot. When you had to do that, that was a lot of work because 
you had your costuming, um, you, you, they have a, a wardrobe department, so you would have your wardrobe and your costume that you would have for your attraction, but you can't just cross dress. That will never ever happen in a Walt Disney World theme park. So you would have to go down to a wardrobe, they would have to get you a wardrobe um, and costume signed out so you could go work that, which meant you had to get there early and then get your costume and your wardrobe and everything like that. Um, my wife, who worked over at the Emporium on Main Street, she had to go every single day to her shift, um, basically about an hour early because she couldn't take her wardrobe home. Uh, with the Backlot Tour, we were actually able to take our uh, wardrobes home with us and you could swap them out if you needed to, if there was any of her issues or anything like that. But we could come already dressed um, to our attraction. Unfortunately for my wife, uh, she had to go to the Emporium every single day and get her um, wardrobe before a shift. And that kind of sucks. You're not getting paid for that. And that you might now, I mean, we're talking back in the early 2000s when we worked there, but hopefully that's changed. Hopefully you start getting paid once you get there and then start getting the costuming and stuff. Um, so that was a big deal, but no one wanted to work the Honey, I uh, Shrunk the Kids playground because it was constant kids running around, standing out in the heat or the rain, um, kids screaming. You would, so many times, like, the employees would always be um, frustrated with getting headaches and stuff like that, and I can understand why. I mean, you have, unfortunately, all the time protein spills. Protein spills is what we would call someone throwing up in the park. Have you ever hear a cast member referring to a protein spill and you can't figure out what that is? Yeah, that's someone throwing up in the park. Um, and you also unfortunately had diaper issues, diaper incidents. Uh, people unfortunately don't always uh, do things that <laughs> are um, very considerate to others. So you would have guests that would let their undiaper trained um, infants kind of run around without diapers and then there would be, you know, and so just use your imagination here, folks. That, that That's what was happening on a daily basis at the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids playground set. And it was just sort of a miserable attraction to work. Uh, not much high cast satisfaction. The best part of working there is that you did get to interact and talk to guests and answer questions, which as a cast member, anything that makes the day go by a little bit faster and just kind of breaks up your routine a little bit and you really can have that guest interaction and provide some magic for guests, that's what you seek, that's what you sought after. Um, that's what you were trained to do, is to give guests their magical day, to give them just pure Disney magic. And at least for me, I took pride in my job, so I always loved interacting with guests. One of my favorite jobs was actually working the AFI at the end of the tram tour, so when you'd let off, basically we would just be sweeping the deck um, over at the AFI, walking through the AFI, making sure there was no trash, answering people's questions about the different displays and things. And as a movie nerd like me, that was so cool. I get to walk around and see all the little prop pieces and stuff like that and answer questions. So that was sort of a dream come true for me. And when I wasn't working, I actually got to uh, Moonlight when the attraction was closed, uh, doing some production work whenever productions came through, because as part of my college program experience, we were able to kind of shadow uh, different areas. And because I had um, hands-on work with uh, video production, I actually got to work on a bunch of different uh, cool productions that actually came through when it was a working studio way back when. Now it's just, unfortunately, a theme park. But now you know. So yeah, that is the attraction. No one wanted to work. Uh, I am sorry to all of you who did have to work the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids playground. Um, I'm sure some of you are gonna say that you had a blast and I'm sure some of you did. But as many of you know, and you can't deny it, at least back in the early 2000s, that's where you were sent if you were having issues, <laughs> disciplinary, um, memorization or otherwise or you just, if they needed to move you out of an attraction for a certain reason, a lot of times that's where you got sent. I'm, I'm actually curious now, like what parks, you know, have that attraction? I would have to imagine like maybe over at Animal Kingdom, uh, it was like the Boneyard maybe. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people probably wouldn't want to work over there. Maybe over at Epcot, it was maybe some of the playgrounds. I'm trying to think, what, what would be over at Epcot that people wouldn't want to work? Maybe Figment, I love Figment but maybe that's a pretty boring attraction or maybe one of the lands. Yeah, I don't know. I have to think about that. I'll get back to you on that. Let me know in the comments what you think 
in every park what that attraction would be. I have to like call some of my former contacts with the other parks and find out what maybe that attraction was. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this was at least a little bit informative. Um, and yeah, I hope you watch us in future videos. All right, thank you so much. Aloha, everyone. Peace.